can you hear me okay? Awesome. So yeah, I am the geek, so I don't know if that makes me the boring guy or not. I'm hoping not to be boring. I first want to just tell you um, how I got into the cannabis business because I've only about been about six weeks into uh, the cannabis industry. I come from technology and media. Uh, my last boss was this guy. <laughs> And it was about as fun as it looks. Um, it was a really big fucking mistake. Uh, but you know, we bounced back from our mistakes. And uh, the new uh, leader of my company is this guy, Jigar Patel. And it's about as fun as it looks. Uh, I'm really psyched about that. Um, what, what NorCal is, it's a vertically integrated cannabis company. So basically what that means is we grow cannabis, we process it, uh, we put it into products, we create brands, we distribute it through dispensaries that we own, delivery that we own. Uh, and my little uh, piece is that uh, satellite dish there, business intelligence. Uh, and, and that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today, um, really about um, all the great questions that exist uh, in this industry for me and why I'm so excited about being part of the cannabis business. And it kind of starts with this for me because this is a picture of alcohol prohibition, uh, shutting down stills, feds showing up, arresting people, throwing families in jail, and just fucking with people. And, and that's kind of sort of where we are now in, in a big portion of this uh, country. Uh, and between prohibition and today in the alcohol business, we went to this, which is uh, thousands of products, thousands of brands, um, different formulations, uh, targeting different types of people and creating joy for a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And so it's that journey for me from this product, this agricultural product, to products that really are addressing specific types of people, specific types of needs, different price points, uh, different formulations, different applications. And that's the journey that we're going to go through in the cannabis business. And as a, as a geek, as a marketing research, market research person, um, that's really exciting because there's so much that we need to know and so much that we need to discover in order to get to a place where we're addressing all different types of people. I actually think it's even more intense in cannabis than it is in, in alcohol because if you think about this alcohol superstore, um, it's basically just alcohol, water, and sugar in that whole place, right? It's, it's, a, it's a chemical that basically gives the same experience or slightly pretty much the same experience to everyone. The really cool thing about cannabis is that it's a really complicated and understudied plant that has 113 different cannabinoids that map to a biological system that have been part of our bodies for thousands of years. And so the different types of effects, the different types of experiences, the way that this plant can actually help us, we know anecdotally, we know from our own personal experience, but there are huge vistas of opportunity to create products that can help people in a lot of different ways. And unlike alcohol, we're not just going to stick with a drink. Um, cannabis right now is going through this amazing revolution where people are dreaming up new products, new experiences like we just saw. And so the diversity of products and the applications that people can have uh, with this, to me, gets me really excited because there's just so much to learn and so much to invent. If we think about someone's day, and um, this is just a made up person, that little pieces of people, but you know, we all start our day trying to get going. Sometimes we use coffee, sometimes we use products to make ourselves more beautiful. I certainly do in the morning apply <laughs> liberal cream to my body and face. So just a little personal note. Uh, uh, 
uh, we use pharmaceutical products to uh, overcome uh, feelings that we may have or experiences that we may want to avoid. Um, when we get later into the day, we use, uh, sometimes we use uh, red wine to uh, relax, sometimes we use white wine to relax, uh, sometimes we use vodka to have fun. Uh, we use products to ease our pain, uh, we use uh, products to sleep, and we use products to heal. And this is the uh, daily experience of many of us as we choose different types of products to basically help us get through uh, the journey of being a human being, which isn't always easy. What I think uh, is going to happen with cannabis is that there will be applications for this plant <laughs> that are going to, I didn't know this was a funny slide. Uh, <laughs> I'm the geek, so. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of market research right now to, at NorCal, and it's really amazing, you know, the stigma is that people are just getting stoned and playing Fortnite, you know? Uh, and, and there's a lot of that. Um, but, but a lot of people use this product to address anxiety, to address pain, to address a lot of different uh, issues that they have to either have an experience or to avoid an experience. Uh, this is the one data slide, which is really interesting to me because you think about the beer category and it's supposed to be this super fragmented category with all of these different craft beers. But in fact, you have really strong brands. 50% of the category is dominated by 10 brands. And most of the rest of the category is branded. But when you look at the cannabis category right now, you only have 10 brands covering a really small fraction of the market. And this blue private area is, is really unbranded. It's strains or it's dispensary brands. So the ability to communicate specific applications, specific reasons, uh, and specific experiences uh, is, is very underdeveloped. Um, and we have amazing brands in the cannabis space. <laughs> We have Ganja Runner, which really is, is amazing. Uh, we have Worldwide Weed, which is, is really, uh, I think, uh, should win a design award. Uh, Pusher, which is really, as a cannabis distributor, that's really the, the, the way to win the hearts and minds. Uh, uh, and, and we have all these very progressive ways of communicating the value of cannabis. So, you know, there's plenty of room in our business to get better uh, in, terms, in terms of branding uh, and, and to get beyond um, this uh, horrific uh, misogyny. Um, so it's really interesting to me to, to study the category and to look at the way that brands are starting to try to differentiate and communicate what they are and try to find spaces. This is Select, which is very popular oil. It's kind of cool. They, they, they try to array their products along this kind of chemical line of THC, so a continuum. They've tried to break out different aspects like elite and kind of this sort of basic. Um, they've got different applications within here, dabs, et cetera. So you can see them trying to think about how do we communicate and differentiate our brands to cover different types of consumers, different types of experiences. Um, this is Lucid Mood, uh, pretty um, rudimentary, but interesting how they're trying to uh, separate between wellness uh, and lifestyle, uh, and then uh, adopting different pens for different experiences, and that, that seems to be pretty common. And then sort of the, the most uh, extreme of simplicity, which is Dosis, which is a very popular brand. Uh, they built a store in LA literally around six products. So I don't know why you need a store necessarily, maybe you do, um, but it's kind of the extreme of, of helping people understand that there are six feelings you can have as a result of using this product uh, and, and really simplifying for people. Um, I'm just gonna end with, so this is kind of why I got in the business and what interests me and where I think we are. Um, what I'm really excited about is answering some fundamental questions. Um, the first is just around consumers. I mean, um, there's so many people that use cannabis, old people, young people, people that are trying to make a feeling go away, people that are trying to bring a feeling with them, um, et cetera. And so uh, trying to segment people across um, 
price sensitivity, brand sensitivity, uh, what types of products they want to use, what types of experiences that they want, uh, whether they're new or whether they're um, uh, an existing customer. Um, that's really interesting to me. Second, how well are the different products in our category addressing uh, needs? It's, it's, um, uh, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of bro brands, there are a lot of kind of urban party brands, but it, is that really uh, filling all of the space and all of the opportunity uh, in addressing uh, the way that people can use cannabis? Third, um, how does the um, actual um, adoption of different brands work? Because it doesn't just go from brand to consumer. There are uh, buyers, there are bud tenders, there is social media, and so just thinking about how we can ultimately communicate our brands, communicate the value of our brands, and really uh, uh, seize the opportunity of bringing this plant and the effects of this plant and the benefits of this plant uh, to more and more people. Thank you all very much for paying attention to me, and uh, have a good night. <laughs>